talk to that driver. But, if, you know, if it gets too crazy, if the speeds get too high, possibly this guy gets off the freeway. California Highway Patrol might kind of be forced just to let it go. But right now, though, they are in pursuit. And all they want is talk to this driver for failure to yield. We don't even hear about any kind of other warrants or wants on that vehicle. Very interesting just to see why this person running from law enforcement this morning. Right. Yep. But, it, it, you know, when, any, when anybody's running from law enforcement, you've got to kind of think that that driver's probably looking more in the rearview mirror than, when, than what they're, you know, looking ahead of them. And that always adds tension to when we watch these things. And, when, and you're right, when he starts changing lanes erratically, that's something different as well. Right now, though, it looks like he's just kind of trying to blend into traffic. I don't know if this is some idea that maybe this driver is just going to just keep driving to their destination and pull over. We've seen that in the past. But in this case... These speeds are just a little bit faster than what's going on down there. And, of course, the folks driving this morning, they're just going to work, going about their day. They really have no idea that this vehicle's coming up on them a little faster than what the traffic is. You can see it right there. He's basically passing a lot of these folks. I'm looking out the window just wondering if it's getting a little bit denser down there. It is as we make our way over to John Wayne. So we're going to be in the Costa Mesa area, Santa Ana. So maybe he's going to get stuck in some traffic, but not enough to bring this to an end. Again, you see the California Highway Patrol right there, lights and sirens kind of warning the public this is coming through. Right. And, and and that's, you know, then this is the thing. In this case right now, they, you know, we're hearing from our assignment desk that they're getting information that it's a possible female driver behind the wheel. Uh, so they're saying, but they're saying that's the only person inside that car. So you just have the driver. In this case, they're saying a female driver. It doesn't really make any difference to uh, California Highway Patrol, but it's just something really to, to keep an eye on and talk about. This is one of those areas where with the uh, with the helicopter, I get a little bit worried when we kind of, they we lose them there underneath the, one of those overpasses actually at an interchange. But right now, though, Vinny really staying on it, keeping with that car, California Highway Patrol down there on the ground. We're making our way into Irvine. That's going to be our next stop on our pursuit tour as we're making our way south. Uh, the vehicle, just a little faster than freeway speeds. The original want, just a failure to yield. And California Highway Patrol, they're behind them in force. And you can see some other officers right there. Don't know if they're going to join the pursuit. Maybe they're going to do another one of those swap outs to make sure that the officers are fresh that are right behind it. Maybe they were just uh, in the area and just happened to see this pursuit just go by. We are in our backup helicopter. Uh, uh, Roxy, first of all, I have to apologize. They were asking us about the uh, the map and things, and like, uh, but then we're in a backup helicopter. Today. That was that was more for our producers. Um, and you're right, though. And this is one of the things when we watch in Skyfox. I know personally something that I always get worried about, especially when they back off from one of these chases and it's somebody driving very erratically. In this case, this vehicle, based right now, we see just a little faster than freeway speeds, but the lights and sirens from the uh, California Highway Patrol, at least they're down there and they're warning the folks on the roadway. You know, something's coming up, maybe you know, in this case, just a little bit faster, but at least it gives the civilians or everybody down there on the road going about their business today an idea that something's going on. Vinny, can you push into that car just a little bit tighter there? I think maybe those off that we were talking about just moments ago put out some spike strips because it definitely looks like the driver front is going flat. So hopefully this thing is going to start coming to an end out here as that first tire really starting to get flat out there.
But definitely, and, and you know, this is something that those officers, you know, from California Highway Patrol, are all law enforcement, these are things that they really have to, you know, balance out. They have to figure out how they're going to do this. In this case, you know, disabling that vehicle on the freeway, taking out a tire, you know, it, if the tire goes flat and he pulls over, that's one thing. But if now they have an impaired vehicle and still trying to get away from law enforcement, this could turn into something completely different. Yeah. It definitely, definitely slowing down. Definitely slowing down. De yeah. And and you know, Roxy and Tony, that that's one of the things we watch these chases all the time. And if that vehicle not stopping in law enforcement, they you know they have information. They can figure out who this car belongs to. This is getting a little bit tense right here because this car definitely down one tire right now. The speeds seem like they're almost speeding up. Maybe it's a little bit of that dust and dirt. Uh, definitely an, 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 all the way in the emergency lane. But you just kind of got to wonder, this person now with a vehicle that's a little bit impaired could be a lot impaired depending upon, you know, that driver's skill set. But you just got to wonder, why do you keep running if this really was, as we've been saying, just a traffic stop, this person refusing to stop this morning, and now that tire going flat. I have a feeling we're going to see parts of that coming off that car here in just a moment or two. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it looks like they just went through another spike strip. So you're going to kind of wonder if they they're going to try if, if they're going to have more than one flat tire. Again, these are the types of situations where law enforcement they've they've got to make these decisions down there, you know, disabling those, you know, putting taking out those tires. It could stop the car, but then again, it could set up a situation where now this driver has less control of that vehicle, continuing with high speeds. I'm kind of looking up ahead, and just uh, we're, we've been staying on the 405 freeway out here, and uh, now there is no more emergency lane. So back in with traffic, and now we know for a fact at least one flat tire, possibly going to be losing a couple more here as this uh, chase continues. Southbound 405, and I'll get you that city here in just a second. There goes the tire. Yep, there goes the tire. Yeah, and, and now we're down to the rim. Now, those vehicles can drive like that, but you've got to know. Now, all of a sudden, it's it's like driving in, in snow or ice or something like that. That one wheel doesn't have that traction anymore, and right now, that wheel is solid. But eventually, that's going to start coming apart as well. That's usually when we see those cars start giving up before the driver. But you just, again, <laughs> I'm just dumbfounded. Why is this woman running from law enforcement this morning? Hopefully, nobody gets hurt. Oof. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, you know, the speeds are really picking up, too. I'm not sure, but, you know, the speeds are really picking up, and you've just, you know, we, we all know, we've been just talking about, it, you know, this vehicle less able to uh, drive quickly, less able to perform. If they have to stop suddenly, you have no tire on that front wheel, so now you're about, you're down, you know, a third, or sorry, a quarter of what your braking capabilities are, and we don't know. That other spike strip might have taken out a tire on the other side, but this person continuing to push that little car this morning, I'm not sure exactly what it is. Might be a little Ford Focus down there, but it really, you know, that truck basically driving next to this person probably saying, hey, don't you know you, you got a flat tire, and he's got to know that law enforcement is behind him, so uh, just... Yeah, no tire. Yeah, no tire at all. And uh, it's kind of weird that that one truck is just kind of hanging out there. Uh, that also, that's uh, we talked about that in the past as well. Uh, if law enforcement's chasing a vehicle, steer clear, stay away. Uh, you know, even if that person has the best intentions, uh, you know, the law enforcement, all of them, they just want to handle this on their own, and they just don't want to see anybody get hurt. Ugh. Oh, 
Definitely, and, and we've been talking about that. It's you know we want to kind of see the other side of the ve uh, other side of the vehicle, see if they lost a tire. Maybe now that the or the, another one of the front uh, front tires is going flat, and that could be a really good thing. Especially you know we know these little cars, front wheel drive. If they have both the tires, both actual rubbers missing from those front wheels, now you're just running on rims. It could it's going to have a hard time stopping, but it's also going to have a hard time getting going again once it does stop. Uh, that female driver right now, where it's the first time we're actually getting to take a look in the front seat there, I, I see something in the passenger side. So they said it was just the driver by themselves. Hopefully that uh, it, it is just that, and, and maybe there's just things in that front seat. But uh, we're taking a look. We're going to get on wrong onto the other side of the car there, see if that uh, passenger side front is going flat as well. Animal. Yep, definitely, and, and so that that second that second attempt right there, if that was another uh, attempt for the uh, spike strip, uh, then they didn't, uh, they weren't able to get the tires. I, I also, uh, Roxy, I'm kind of with you. You mentioned it. I, I'm hoping that's not a pet. Looks like we are going to be exiting the freeway right here. We'll get you some streets here in just a second, but uh, it's this would be the opportunity if there are no other civilian cars around, and there are quite a bit. This might be a spot where the California Highway Patrol might be able to use a pit maneuver. There you go. You saw those uh, sparks coming off that front wheel when they were locking it up right there dry, uh, as they're coming up to traffic. This is one of those ones where a lot of people at home, you know, they're armchair generals. They're like, just block them in. You know, they just can't do that. It's just not their policy. And, again, their, their attempts right now is, even though that's a suspect, they don't want to see anybody get hurt, and that's including that suspect, and they don't want to put them in a position where they're going to block them in and then something dangerous is going to happen. Looks like, uh, are we getting, nope, we're not getting back onto the freeway. We'll get you some streets here in just a moment. But now, off of the freeway, on the surface streets, and we are definitely going to be in the Mission Viejo area. We We just don't know. We're working. Uh, I'm working with uh, Vinny and our pilot this morning. We're trying to make sure we we stay in a position where we can keep an eye on this car. Uh, it, all these times they're in traffic like that. We've seen these in the past, and I just kind of wonder if this person really has a destination for some reason. Maybe they just want to get the car back to their their home, or they feel safer there for some reason. Uh, this is one of those situations where whatever the reasoning is, I can assure you that that vehicle's probably going to wind up in impound, even if it is parked at this person's residence. So you always kind of wonder why they seem to want to go someplace, and opposed to just pull over, and especially if it's something as minor as just a traffic infraction. Uh, the chase continuing out here, and again, I believe, I believe we're going to be on Paseo de Valencia. Uh, again, we're, we're still working to get uh, here with exactly the street names, but you can see this chase continuing, and again, very little traffic, but when we come up these red lights, you know that car impaired, hitting the, hitting the brakes hard there, at least they stopped at the traffic, at the traffic light. It's over there. Uh, that's right, uh, uh, Roxy. And, and, you know, the, we've talked about that in the past as well. You know, if he's running a stop sign, if he's not using his blinker or something, this could be the, the time when they could do the pit maneuver. Uh, you can see that car kind of just the, the wheel spinning right there as they're trying to get that speed up. And that's what we were talking about. With no tire on there, his stopping abilities are impaired, but then also his driving, you know, the, the go part is, you know, acceleration impaired as well. Uh, that one California Highway Patrol vehicle, looks like they want to set it up but they want to make sure that they're going to be safe and they want to make sure that there's no oncoming traffic as well or cars around it. Uh, we're getting Sky Fox back into position here and uh, we'll keep an eye on this chase. That might be the way they bring it to an end or 
they might have information that this vehicle is going to a residence because they know where that vehicle is, is registered to. So maybe they are just kind of weighing those, weighing it out. Should we just follow or maybe we should try to bring this thing to an end? Uh, just right for sure and we've seen it in the past where you know the california or all any law enforcement they'll go ahead they'll do those pit maneuvers and it'll be a little too fast or or we even we're you know we're so used to watching this we know the procedures and we'll watch something like that and we just kind of go oh he's good look how fast and and they do they you know there is a reason behind why they do it when they do it and we've seen them go south we've seen them go wrong and, and we also seen him act very well, very well. Here we go, a hard stop again. And looks like he's trying to, oh, look at that. See, this is where it's going to start getting really dicey. And this is where the California Highway Patrol is going to say they're taking too many chances and they're going to try to bring this to an end. Well, that's, that's what the big fear is right there, is that, you know, right now the stopping ability is where we're more worried about. And you're right, Michaela, a lot of that smoke, probably there's that front wheel, that drive wheel, just spinning because it has no tire on it. So when they're trying, when this driver's trying to go, it's just going to start spinning and it's going to, it's really going to damage the rim. And, and that might be the big plus. That might be what brings us to an end when that car runs out of rim. Uh, they, you know, it just might not be able to go anymore. California Highway Patrol, they've, they're tasked with the difficult <laughs> That's right, Michael. And you know, you're right. This vehicle, for the most part, stopping or trying to stop, at, at you know when it needs to, when it to be safe. We did see it run that one light earlier on, but it basically was just trying to. Here we go again. Here's another green in the center there, hard on the brakes. You saw a lot of smoke coming. He was just trying to, here we go again, there's another green in the center there, hard on the brakes, you saw a lot of smoke coming from that front wheel, and it, it, this just this oddness to have, you know, I'm guessing, I'm going to take a guess right now, that's Aliso Creek Road, and okay. again, there you go, Michaela, that's what you were talking about, slow on the go, there's no traction on that front wheel, this time we didn't see her really kind of hammer it and see that spark in the spinning of the wheel, just kind of going a little bit slower, y you're right, the uh, officers, and we've been watching, you know, California, and especially out here in the in the southern part of uh, California. Now we're in Orange County. They, we are very tender with our way we handle our pursuits. Meaning these officers have a lot of protocol and a lot of discipline, and they they will plan this out. And they have to weigh their pros and cons. How dangerous is it? How how quick? You know, why do we want to get this car off the road? Mm -hmm. In this case, they are really just following right now, which is interesting enough. The lights and sirens I'm sure are going to be helping anybody at those intersections we did see uh, a moments ago I don't know because we had that signal we have those signal issues uh, other vehicles that were around that car at the light basically do yeah, lightweight illegal things to get away from that vehicle so uh, clearly that uh, law enforcement that California Highway Patrol using the lights and sirens people around it doing what they're supposed to do give this person room give those law enforcement uh, folks their space as well but the chase it continues out here, very strange indeed. And I'm going to get you a city here as we've been making our way. It's Laguna de yep, Here we go. Oh, okay, we've here got we go. a situation happening uh, here. There Car we go. Is making going a to stop or trying to turn. That's it. That's okay. it. That's this it. Is the end of the Doing pursuit. a little bit of a push, and. Uh, Again, it just, it is so, it, until that person is out of that vehicle, this could be, this could end it very 
badly very quickly if they oh. use that car to hurt, try to hurt those officers or continue driving. Right now, though, the one officer weapons out. The other officer seems to be talking, but those doors not unlocked. So we might, they might have to forcefully get this person, this woman, out of that driver's seat. We'll take, we'll keep an eye on it. There we go. Looks like. Uh, that right now they're just trying to get her attention, but it's just so bizarre that these uh, sometimes you just don't get out and just uh, you know just get, put the cuffs on yourself. So maybe even you, this is uh, putting so many people at danger. But that one officer right now holstering the weapon, and it looks like they're getting out something to break the windows to get that driver out of the car. Um, all right, uh, we have. Uh, uh, somebody on the line with there. us who knows a little bit more about this kind of situation, how tense they can be. Dennis Zine is former L.A. City Councilor and also former LAPD uh, with the LAPD. Uh, <laughs> it's really good to talk to you, and I'm sorry that it's over these circumstances. You know all too well about the tensity, intensity of a moment like this. It looks like they're breaking the glass to get into the vehicle. They have to make sure they keep themselves safe. They want to try and keep the person that's driving this vehicle as safe as possible. There's a lot of calculations that go into something like this Dennis. well it's a precarious position. the officers they're in extreme danger in this particular location fortunately uh, the individual is not doing any resisting other than not complying uh, they will break the window they use an asp or a baton a PR 24 break the window to extricate there we go they're gonna break the window get the person out of the car uh, this is a very very dangerous position for the officers as well as for the individual in the car because you have no idea what they're into. We're going to get the person out of the car, take into custody. Uh, but this stop came to a unique stop. Uh, you don't want to have the vehicle in the front. You, you just want to take them into custody as quickly and as simply as possible. But all those officers were extremely exposed to danger just because of the position where that the car stopped. The vehicle. And the police car. Yeah, very, very dangerous. But yeah. fortunately, it looks like it's going to end with a code four and taking the custody. But this is not the way you want to stop the car. They had no alternative, no choice. Uh, sufficient deputies there, a higher patrol. It may be Orange County sheriffs also. But the bottom line is it's going to come to an end and uh, they'll be taking the custody. Why they do this, we never know. Stu knows from his experience, I know from my experience, no reason, no logic, and expose many, many people to danger. But fortunately, this is going to come to an end, but very, very dangerous for the officers. Uh, individual probably will resist to some extent, uh, but sufficient uh, officers there to take them into custody. Over the years, uh, I've covered my share of pursuits, unfortunately, and I know you've seen your share of them, and Stu certainly has seen his share. And You know, there's been any number of things that have uh, caused people to run from police, to flee from police, to lead people on a pursuit. Uh, but I'd, I'd argue that now we've got more troubled people uh, given what we've just been through and I think there's a lot of desperation and so who knows what exactly the state of mind of this driver was but I'm glad to know that it is over um, and that there's no public risk anymore and we're hoping that that person can get the help they need. Um, again the culmination of a pursuit if you're just tuning in uh, it ends here in we believe it's Laguna Niguel it had been on the 405 for some time reaching uh, high speed at uh, several points during the the, the uh, the, the pursuit. We believe it is a female driver that uh, has now been placed under arrest. You can see it looks as though they're they're cuffing her on the back of that patrol car. A little tiny vehicle. Uh, at some point they used a spike strip and were able to puncture the driver's side front wheel and that certainly made it more of a challenge for that, that driver to maneuver that vehicle. I think that's a wrap for us here on this pursuit. Uh, our thanks to Dennis Zine, former LA City Councilor and former LAPD officer. Good to good to chat with you. Same here. Good to see you. Good to see you back on uh, Fox 11. Oh, uh, that's LA. nice of you to say, Dennis. Hopefully, we can get you back in studio at some point and, and talk about Absolutely. other things other than pursuit.